Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event with us. My name is Sarah. I will be the facilitator for today's session. Um, we have some fantastic schools here with us today. Um, before we get started, a few housekeeping items for you. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is a webinar. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time throughout the session. If you are asking the question to a, a particular institution, we encourage you to list that institution so they can answer that question uh, for you very quickly. This is just one of any uh, different sessions uh, happening today, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website at strivescan.com. Uh, and this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC if you'd like to watch it later on as well. I'd now like to turn it over to our wonderful first presenter, University of Warwick. Hey, greetings from England and thanks so much for that, Sarah. So um, my name, um, just, to, just to add some confusion, is also Sarah. I'm uh, from the University of Warwick. And Warwick is a highly selective campus university. We're located right in the heart of England um, and provide a really safe and welcoming environment for our students. And academically, uh, Warwick challenges universities that are centuries older than us. So we're only just over 50 years old, um, but we're consistently rated in the top 10 universities in the UK and the top 100 worldwide. Um, and we're a member of the Russell Group and are very research intensive. So our students really do enjoy learning from expert, experts who are right at the forefront of um, as well as offering very focused three year degrees that specialize in a particular subject. Uh, we also offer broader transdisciplinary degrees such as liberal arts and global sustainable development. And they draw on the expertise from across the universities uh, to look at different issues from different perspectives. Um, but Warwick students don't typically just uh, value and enjoy our academic reputation. Uh, we're a really diverse and inclusive campus community that provides support and an abundance of opportunities for our students to really get involved with during their time with us. Our students typically thrive not only on exploring their academic subject, but also exploring the campus and all of the different opportunities that are available to them. And the campus really does feel a little bit like a miniature city with all of the facilities there and with all of the extracurriculars available for students to enjoy. Um, Warwick Students Union is run by students and for students, and they organize around about 250 different student societies, plus an additional further 65 sports clubs, um, giving back, activism and exploring new things uh, are all things that Warwick students value um, and I should say that also our students don't just enjoy joining these societies but that actually they really like taking part in leadership activities as well. So as an example of this Warwick Economic Summit is just one of our uh, student organizations. It's one of the largest annual student run conferences in Europe that is organized purely by Warwick students. So you can see from the range of speakers available that they brought together for the most recent forum that our students really are very much go-getters in terms of how they kind of go out, network, uh, reach out to people, explore opportunities, and they really make things happen. So that's part and parcel of what being a student at Warwick is like. Um, Warwick is a suburban campus. We're located right on the edge of the city of Coventry, which is a medium sized city in England. Um, and from Coventry, it's super easy to travel around the UK and also to the rest of Europe. Uh, with our access to Coventry and Birmingham, students can really enjoy city life very easily. Um, and for those keen to explore the area around the university, um, we're surrounded by historical towns stunning castles and the birthplace of William Shakespeare. So there's a lot to, to enjoy. We have a housing guarantee for on-campus housing for first year students. And for the second and third year Warwick Accommodation, our housing office, they run a site called Warwick Student Pad. And that helps students to transition into private housing in the local area. And all of the housing that they uh, allocate onto Warwick Student Pad has been vetted by the university as well. So we really do support students in helping to grow and transition um, from living in supported accommodation through to that independent living um, in private housing. So it means that when students graduate, they can be really confident that they know how to do all of these things so they can really go off and explore all of those opportunities post-graduation. 
Uh, tuition really varies by program and is typically lower for the arts and social sciences programs than for STEM. Um, Warwick and the surrounding area have a really reasonable cost of living compared to some of the big cities in the UK. And that does mean um, that, that hopefully you can try and save money uh, while you're a student. The costs shown here are really very approximate um, just as a guide, but they're hopefully to give you a bit of an estimation of the amounts for one year. And so I would just say just, just treble it to three years for the majority of our programmes to figure out the rough cost for the total duration. Um, we do believe that there should be no barrier to talent, so that's why we're committed to offering a scholarship that makes it easier for gifted, ambitious learners uh, to pursue their academic interests with us. Um, for 2021, we offered 250 uh, tuition fee awards based on academic merit. Uh, we're really excited to run this again for 2022. We're currently just working out the number of awards and, and the value of those awards that we'll have available. For admission, we publish our IB diploma requirements on each of our program pages on the website. And for students on the US high school curriculum or taking other international qualifications, uh, we use an equivalency system to our UK A level requirements. That typically translates to a minimum of three AP tests ranging between 544 to 555. Students don't need to have achieved those at the time of um, uh, application. So for students in their senior year who are, who are on track to hopefully achieve those um, from the end of senior year, then I definitely recommend that you think about us as one of your choices. In addition to academic qualifications, the personal statement, the recommendation letter and the predicted scores for senior year are also crucial components of the application. And if you'd like to know more about the application process and all of the requirements, um, I would definitely encourage you to check out my self-serve tablet of resources you can also access our um, open day uh, link there. We'll have virtual open houses in October. So thanks so much. And uh, I'll pass back to Sarah. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. Next up, we have Goldsmith University of London. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, wrong screen. OK. Uh, hey, my name's Will. I'm the International Officer for Goldsmiths University of London. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, but Goldsmiths is located in the wonderful city of London. We were founded in 1891, and we've been a member of the University of London since 1904. We have around 10,000 students on our campus, so we're a medium-sized university. Uh, a third of our students come from outside of the UK. Uh, we have a very sizable LGBTQ plus population and first generation population, and nearly half our students are students of color. We've also implemented a Green New Deal on our campus, so we are committing to carbon neutrality by 2025. Uh, and to that end, um, we've banned beef on our campus. We're in the process of banning single-use plastics. Uh, and if we do reach this goal, we should be the first school in the UK to be carbon neutral. So our campus is located about 10 minutes southeast of the city center of London. We're a single site campus, so all of your undergraduate coursework and support is going to be inside that orange line there. We have residence halls located both on and just off of our campus. Uh, and London is a really amazing city to be a student. We were just ranked again, the best student city in the world by QS uh, for 2022. We have around about half the city is parkland, 48% uh, of the city's parkland. So really great way to escape the urban, uh, sometimes urban chaos that you get in London. There's around 9 million people that live in the city. There's amazing theater on the West End, incredible sports venues all over the city where you can watch um, soccer, football. Um, we also have over 250 museums. There's a cinema on our campus, so you can catch a movie uh, between classes. We also have a public museum on our campus and our libraries nearly 24 seven. We're only closed three days of the year. Also, the College Green is a great place to throw around a Frisbee or eat lunch between classes as well. Our academics focus on the fine and performing arts, humanities, social sciences, business and management, uh, and education, law. We are one of the top 100 schools in the world for the arts and humanities. Eight of our departments are in the world's top 50, as well as eight in the UK's top 30. We also were recently ranked ninth in the UK for research intensity, and we have 55 research centers and units on campus some run by Goldsmiths, some in conjunction with other University of London schools. And we do encourage students to undertake research from year one. Um, education in England is, is slightly different. So Goldsmiths too has uh, three-year bachelor's degrees. 
since it's a shorter degree, there's no core curriculum or general education. So you'll be directly entering into a degree program and really only studying coursework uh, around that degree program. Here is a non-exhaustive list of our academic programs. We have around 75 undergraduate degrees on offer. Um, some popular ones for American students are in our media communications department. We have a screen school and school of journalism, also computer science where we have games programming and digital arts computing, psychology, uh, and also our art and design programs, as well as our music and theater. Uh, we have an electronic music program, which is great for those who might want to become a DJ or a sound editor or mixer. Uh, I apologize for that ambulance in the background. Um, and our application is all on UCAS. So you have direct entry into degree programs, like I mentioned before. Goldsmiths is test optional. Um, so we do uh, not require test scores this year, um, but I don't know if that will extend beyond this year. We do require 3.0 unweighted GPA, and um, we do also have an application deadline for priority applications on 26th of January. The total cost of attendance at Goldsmiths ranges from around 36 to 39,000 US dollars per year, and that includes pretty much everything, cost of living, accommodation, tuition, visa fees, health insurance, transportation costs, et cetera. We do offer some international scholarships that you can apply for, uh, and we also do accept federal loans and Parent PLUS loans at Goldsmiths. Uh, students can also work part-time during term and 40 hours a week during uh, breaks and holidays, so that can really offset some cost of living as well. Our accommodation is uh, located really close by to campus. It's mixed gender uh, housing, and we do guarantee accommodation for you in the first year. Uh, private housing is uh, available for you around campus after that. We also um, have suite style living. So you'll share a kitchen and living space with other students, um, but you'll have your own room with your own bathroom, which is a little bit different from what you might be used to in, uh, in a US uh, university. Um, about 91% of our students go on to further study in their field or work in their field within six months of graduation, which is one of the highest rates in London. Uh, we do offer work placements and internships every year. You can either do them in London or abroad. So the vast majority of our students will undertake at least one while they're in school. We also are ranked third in the UK for producing business founders. Um, that was a, a recent study by Hitachi Capital. Um, and we're 14% of our graduates start their own business within one year of graduation. So we have a very high entrepreneurial rate on campus as well. And lastly, we have plenty of options for socializing outside of your course with over 120 different societies and clubs on campus. We also have over 20 sports options and there are additional sports options through University of London. Um, so there's really something for everyone. You can play competitively or intramural sports. And that's all I have on Goldsmiths. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll pop my email and a link to our virtual tour in the chat. But have a great Sunday, everyone. Great. Thank you, Will. Next up, we have University of Essex. Thank you. Um, OK, hopefully you can see my screen. My name is Emma, and I work in the recruitment team at the University of Essex. Um, you are in a group with the majority of uh, universities that are from the UK, so some of these facts you might already know, but just in case you're not familiar, um, let me tell you why England might be a good option for you. In England, our degrees, or certainly the majority of our degrees, are three years in length, so it's much quicker to study in the UK. Um, we also offer early degree specialism, but, so for students that know what it is that they want to study, what it is they want to major in, um, then the UK or England could be a really great option for you. Our fees are really, really competitive. They are going to vary from institution to institution and from course to course, but typically you could be looking at sort of around twenty to $30,000 per academic year, and that's for three years of study. Lots of our universities will offer some really great international scholarships, and lots of us are also FAFSA accredited. UCAST has already been mentioned, so UCAST is the online portal which you can apply to universities in the UK once you get your head around it, it's quite simple and easy to use. Um, the student route visa will allow you to work on all off campus or and off campus um, and lots of our internships are paid, so it's a good way to make a bit of money whilst you're studying. 
And also the UK um, enables you to, we have a visa that enables you to stay in the UK once you've graduated and look for work for two years um, once, you, once you've studied. So yeah, a few facts about England, and now I'm going to tell you why um, I think Essex is a great option. So we have three campuses. They are all located in Essex, in the southeast of the UK, uh, located in Colchester, South End, and Loughton. Colchester is the largest of our three campuses, where most of our students um, study, most of our courses are taught, and they are all located within really easy reach of London. In my opinion, it's the perfect distance to London. You can be in the city within an hour, uh, but you really notice a difference sort of in, in living costs. Um, Colchester is the UK's oldest recorded town, and we're not really known for our glorious weather in um, England, but in Essex we do have some of the UK's best weather. And one of my favourite things about our location is you can see where we are um, located on the map. We're close to the coast, so we're surrounded by some really beautiful um, beaches. There's, uh, um, this Essex has 350 miles of coast, um, coastline, um, we're close to the city, and there are some really lovely towns and villages uh, close by. So Essex is a dual intensive university. We place as much importance on teaching um, and on research as we do teaching. And we're recognized for the quality of our um, research. We're top 25 university for research quality. We're a university that's really well known for our social sciences. So in particular subjects like politics, international relations, sociology, criminology, economics, human rights. These are subjects that we're consistently well ranked for. We have a really interdisciplinary approach to our teaching as well, which means that you can pick different classes or modules from different departments and across faculties to really shape the degree around what interests you. We've got a huge range of subjects, which I definitely don't have time to go into, but we've got three faculties, faculties of uh, humanities and arts, science and health and social sciences. Um, and within those faculties, we've got 21 academic departments. So a little bit about student life. We have over 160 sports clubs and societies. So there's definitely something for everyone. Um, our Colchester campus is a really large, vibrant sort of campus community where it, could where it has everything that you could need, um, including a theatre, a cinema, um, a brand new sports arena, which has some amazing facilities, including basketball and volleyball courts over 20 restaurants um, there's a gym as well which is included as part of your, as part of your accommodation contract and we have climbing walls all sorts of pitches inside and outside we guarantee on-campus accommodation for your first year of study um, and we're also ranked seventh for spend on services and facilities per student so we're pumping money money back into our campuses for students to enjoy I've mentioned that it's really cost effective to study in the UK. So our degrees are uh, three years. Um, as I've already mentioned, you could in theory do a three year undergraduate degree and a one year master's in the same amount of time it would take you to do um, an undergraduate degree in the US. Um, our fees at Essex are uh, just under 17,000 to just under 20,000 pounds per academic year. So that's somewhere sort of between 21 to $25,000. Um, and we have some really competitive scholarships, uh, including an America's Regional Scholarship, some really great sports scholarships as well, and an IB Excellence Scholarship, which is automatic, and we are FAFSA accredited. Um, of course, one of the main reasons that I'm sure you're wanting to go to university is to get a really good uh, job at the end. So we offer some really uh, great placement year opportunities for career orientated individuals. This is a really, really great opportunity. 91% of our undergraduate students are in employment or further study. Um, and we have employability modules built into our undergraduate degree. So there's a real focus on getting students prepared for um, sort of life post university and, and once they're in the job market. We offer skills and CV workshops, there are networking and career events as well. And there's also opportunities to uh, learn a language completely for free alongside your degree, as well as our brand new data science for all program. So probably my favourite thing about Essex is just how international the university is. We're ranked fourth in the UK for international um, outlook. It's not just our students, it's our staff as well that are from, out, like from all over. Um, almost 40% of our students are from outside the UK. So you get to study, live, work, make lifelong friends with people that are from all over the world. So I think that's just about my time out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Newcastle University. Uh, 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good evening from the UK. My name is Thomas, and I am the Regional uh, Recruit Manager for North America at Newcastle University. And um, for those of you who don't know much about Newcastle, it's a, a very lively, friendly student city located in the northeast of England and often seen as the capital of the northeast of England. We are where the red dot is there. And for reference, London is the gold star in the southeast. Just to give you an idea, the journey between the two takes roughly two hours, 50 minutes by plane, uh, by train or about 55 minutes by flight. So not far at all. Newcastle is very well connected to the rest of the UK with direct trains to all of the other major cities. And we're also really lucky to have an international airport just 20 minutes away from our campus and um, from which you can fly to 80 different destinations across Europe and further afield, including places like Paris, Amsterdam, London, Frankfurt and Dubai. As I said, Newcastle is well known as a being a student city and it's consistently ranked in the top five best student cities in the UK and um, more recently in the top 50 global cities in the world. It's also a very um, affordable uh, place to live and to study and is also very safe as well. But it's not just a great place to study, it's also a great place to potentially start your career. And we are a hub for innovation, for technology, for advanced manufacturing um, and the arts as well. And uh, despite the UK's reputation as being rainy, Newcastle uh, is actually one of the driest cities in the UK and actually has less rain than DC, uh, New York, um, and then other potentially more sunny places like Rio and Cape Town as well. Um, and because of that, it means you can enjoy some of the beautiful nature that we have that surrounds the city. We're really well connected to some stunning, be some stunning beaches by Metro. We have the UK's second largest um, metro network after the uh, underground in London um, and we also have some wonderful architecture both in the city and also in the wider region. The northeast is actually home to more castles than anywhere else in England. And this is just an example of some of the sights and sounds of the city um, and further afield. We're very lucky that our campus is located in the heart of the city so the two gold shapes in the bottom left and right there highlight where most of our campus buildings are located, we do have some facilities that are a bit out of the city centre, but 99% um, of our students would be located at one of those two locations there. And then the, the grey rectangle um, is where all of the main shops, um, bars, restaurants, art galleries, theatres, etc. are. So you can see you can be on the campus one minute and you can literally cross over the road and be in the heart of the city the next. Um, and that is our beautiful campus. Our history dates back to the 1830s, so we are very lucky to have some wonderful historic buildings on campus. But obviously we have been investing in our campus the whole time that we've existed, and our most recent buildings um, are include the National Centre for Data, the National Centre for Innovation in the top left there, and in the bottom right, the Urban Sciences Building, which is home to our School of Computer Science. In terms of our reputation, we are ranked in the top 150 in the world. We're actually ranked in the top 100 when it comes to research output. And just to give you an idea, our 134th ranking in the QS World Rankings puts us ahead of UC Davis, Texas A&M, Pittsburgh, Dartmouth, Vanderbilt, uh, Notre Dame and Georgetown. Um, and in the UK, we are ranked top 20 in the UK. Um, and in 13 subjects, we're actually ranked in the top 10, including things like agriculture, art and design, creative writing, landscape, the, uh, food science, Asian studies, communication and media studies, architecture, linguistics and sports science. And along with Warwick, we are one of the founding members of the Russell Group. Um, it includes um, a whole range of universities, um, but is often seen as the UK's version of the Ivy League and um, includes Oxford and Cambridge, which I am sure you will have heard of before. We have a whole host of other uh, awards and rankings as well. Um, and important, we are one of the top 20 most targeted universities in the UK. Um, and we have uh, over 95% of our graduates going to work on further study after six months of graduating. In terms of our structure, we, are, we have three faculties. We offer 200 bachelor's degrees and 300 master's programs to around 27,000 students. A whole host of programs and um, you can see there the different uh, academic departments and schools that we have it's important to point out that things like law and um, medicine dentistry veterinary medicine in the uk are all undergraduate degrees which is another benefit of the uk system it means you don't have to do a, a bachelor's degree before going on to do something like that at grad school and um, we have a wide range of programs in our science agriculture and engineering faculty uh, we, we even offer animal science and we actually own and operate two commercial farms and uh, which are uh, located just outside the city and we also have marine science which um, we have at the coast we have a marine science research base and we also operate an, um, a marine uh, science research vessel um, and then we have our medical sciences faculty as well. In terms of entry requirements we're not test optional but I would say we were test flexible what that means is we don't require the ACT or the SAT we'd love to see three APs 
Um, however, we understand if you haven't got those as well, we can consider things like honours classes, dual enrolment credits. And um, it's important that you check out the subject you're interested in studying on the website to see if it has any specific prerequisites. And if you still are a bit confused, then just get in touch and I will hopefully help you understand. In terms of tuition, to give you an average uh, cost idea, I've compared us as well to one of our closest competitors in the US, which is a private institution, but you can see there are $35,000 a year with us and $72,000 at the US institution. Um, but we do also still have scholarships available and we are also registered with FAFSA, so we can also administer federal loans. Um, we've got a whole host of support and um, specifically for international students and also just wider for the wider community. Um, and we have won a number of awards for our support services, as well as our student experience. We're top 10 in the UK for sports and we've invested a lot in our sports facilities in the past few years. And um, so if you are a bidding athlete, then definitely consider us. And if you'd like to find out more, um, I'll post all of these links into the chat function, but lots of ways to get in touch and to learn more about the university. And if you have a mobile phone to hand, then just scan the QR code and you can sign up to more updates or you can contact me directly via email. Great, thank you so much. Next up, we have University of Bradford. You're muted, Jake. All right, I hope you can hear me now. Yep, all right, all I'm here to talk. Oh, fantastic. All right, I, I'm here to talk about University of Bradford, uh, give you some information about the university and the city. Uh, so for the location, Bradford is located in the north of England uh, in the West Yorkshire region. Um, we're sandwiched in between Manchester and Leeds. Uh, about 20 minutes from the Leeds International Airport is where students usually fly into. Um, so about an hour from Manchester, three hours to London by train, um, and the campus is located uh, about a 10 minute walk from downtown in the train station, making it a uh, quite easy commute from uh, other places in the country. Uh, the Yorkshire region itself uh, is, I find to be quite exciting. I um, included some photos of some of my favorite places in the region, uh, but it's a very nice mix of urban and country life. Uh, as some of my colleagues have alluded to already. Um, it is no, kind of known as the cultural hub of Northern England. Uh, so in addition to some of the uh, beautiful landscapes, uh, castles and football matches you might see, uh, you still have uh, opportunity to uh, take in some excellent culture. Uh, it's the home of like, people like the Bronte sisters, David Hockney, Judy Dench and the Arctic Monkeys. Uh, and if it does look familiar, it's because it's hosted productions like Downton Abbey, Harry Potter and Peaky Blinders. The city of Bradford itself um, is a mid-sized city. Um, the area of Bradford, the city is about the seventh largest in the country, kind of giving you an idea of the size. Um, but the thing to know about Bradford is um, it is a really great sort of slice of modern UK life. It's incredibly diverse. There's over 130 languages spoken in the city. Um, it's one of the fastest growing youth populations in the UK, um, a lot due to the uh, immigrant patterns that have uh, come to Bradford over the years. Um, there's a really diverse mix of people there, um, mostly uh, from places of South Asian, uh, African, Middle Eastern descent. So um, you're really being uh, in the middle of a, a truly diverse mix of people. Uh, Bradford is a UNESCO's first city of film. Uh, it takes its uh, cinema heritage very seriously. Uh, it's home to uh, the National Film and Media Museum. And just like most cities, uh, it has plenty of restaurants, cafes, bars, shopping op uh, options, and things like that. Uh, so within the university, uh, we have uh, some faculties that I'll uh, describe to you for a little bit. Um, we're known for our STEM programs. So uh, the Faculty of Engineering and Informatics is uh, one of our most popular. Um, electrical Engineering is one of our more highly ranked programs. Um, as well as the School of Media Design and Technology. Uh, we do have some new programs in video game design, graphic design, um, and animation, which I think might be of some interest to some US students. Um, we also have a pretty robust film and media uh, production department. Uh, health studies, um, well-ranked programs include uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, um, public health. Um, these are kind of uh, great options for students who want to be in the medical field, but um, don't want to pursue uh, being a doctor in such a um, <laughs> taking up the time commitment for all that. 
Uh, Faculty of Life Sciences, some of the more exciting courses include archaeology and forensics, um, optometry, students have had some great outcomes as well. Um, and within the Faculty of Management, Law and Social Sciences, we have a triple accredited business school uh, and a, the UK's oldest school of uh, peace and conflict studies where uh, US students find most popular things like uh, security studies and peace and conflict resolution. One thing about Bradford is we take social inclusion uh, very seriously, in part due to the uh, ethnic makeup of the city, uh, but also uh, the very international mix we have on campus. Um, it is a great mix of all international students from all backgrounds. Of the 10,000 students at Bradford, there's about um, 2,000 uh, international. Um, we, as I mentioned, we take inclusion very seriously and we won the 2020 Social Inclusion University of the Year from the Sunday Times. Um, and what, what I found is that Bradford, you know, while, while we really do walk the walk when it comes to, um, you know, being a, a safe and equitable space for students of all, of all kinds and all backgrounds, um, anti-racism language is a part of all classes, all faculties, and is baked into the university mission. And, and really, it's all about opportunity for, for all students uh, when they come to campus. So uh, some things to know for U.S. students. Uh, like most schools here, we offer three-year bachelor's and uh, some four-year joint uh, bachelor's and master's programs, uh, usually between $21,000 and $29,000 per year. Um, that cost is offset by the Bradford area's low uh, living costs. So uh, you do have the chance to get out and um, do a lot more than just study. We do accept US financial aid. We have scholarships available. Uh, and pictured here is the green, which is a brand new living facility uh, that has won awards for sustainability on campus. Um, students would have their own rooms uh, and share a bathroom and kitchen with other students on their floor. Uh, we are on the Common App and UCAS um, and students who apply will need one of the SAT and ACT scores or two AP tests. Uh, so I'll leave you with this with graduate employability. Uh, we also won an award uh, recently for being the best university in the country for improving students' life chances and kind of gives you um, you know, the, the idea that we're really all about return on investment for students um, and bringing them uh, to a place where they can be employable after graduation. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I didn't introduce myself. So my name is Jake Reckford, easy to remember, Reckford at Bradford. Um, come uh, message me, follow the links, and I look forward to talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Macquarie University. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. So we are leaving um, the UK, heading back over mainland America, down the Pacific Ocean and into Australia. My name is Leanne Allen and I represent Macquarie University, which is in Sydney, Australia. Um, so a direct flight from the west coast of the US um, and you can also do it from central US as well or just take a flight to LA um, or San Francisco and down. Um, but it's not that far away. Generally, when you leave the west coast, it's about 12 hours. You leave it um, around 11 o'clock at night and get into Sydney about um, 7 in the morning. So this is Sydney, um, home to about 8 million people. And as a student at Macquarie, you have the best of both worlds, the big cosmopolitan city experience, as you can see here. And then um, here are the stunning beaches. This is Bondi Beach, one of the most famous beaches in Australia. And fun fact for you, if you saw one new beach in Australia every day, it would take you 27 years to see them all. Um, so, so much of Australia to explore. And then from the beaches, you can retreat back to campus, which is a stunning Parkland University. We're home to about 40,000 students. And of that, there are 12,000 international students. So an incredibly diverse student population. And certainly one of my favorite things about being on campus as well. There's a lot happening on campus, as you would expect from a US school or a UK school as well. We have clubs and associations. Um, that first photo there is our Mac Warrior, our mascot. The university is named after um, the fifth governor of New South Wales, who was Scottish, hence the Scottish kilt. Um, the second photo there is um, one of two swimming pools we have on campus. I do like to point out the weather allows us to have an outdoor swimming pool, which can be used year round. If it's below 60 degrees in winter, we'll complain it's too cold. If it's above 90 degrees in summer, we'll complain it's too hot. So we do like a very temperate, mild climate in Sydney. If you think you'll miss the snow, that's okay. You'll be able to find it about three hours out of Sydney in the ski resorts there. 
We have 24 hour, seven day a week support services for students. So there's always someone there to speak to if you're feeling a bit homesick or if you need advice about your studies um, or some personal issues you might be facing. We also have strong entrepreneurial spirit and that middle bottom photo there is our incubator hub. So if you have an idea that you think could be brought to life, you can um, work at the incubator hub um, and turn your idea into something sustainable for the future. We also pick you up um, at the airport once you land. Um, so it's not that daunting whether you come by yourself or with your family, we'll pick you up, meet you and take you back to campus um, or wherever you are staying. Um, being a student at Macquarie's, you've probably learned um, in Australia, our degrees are somewhat similar to the UK system in that they are three years in duration. We don't have general education requirements in Australia either. So you need to know what you want to study um, before applying to the university because we assess you based on what you would like to do as opposed to just general entry into the university. Our most popular courses are accounting, international business and business administration, really strong in media and communications as well, um, and security studies and criminology. We specialize in software and telecommunications engineering. Fun fact for you, we actually invented Wi-Fi, so you're welcome. Um, and we also are very strong in earth and environmental sciences. So if you're thinking about sustainability or climate sciences, Macquarie is a great place for that as well. Our flagship program is our Bachelor of Clinical Science and Doctor of Medicine program, which is a six year degree out of high school and allows you to become a doctor at the end of that six years. So a fast um, tracked approach to doing medicine um, compared to the US where it takes about 10 years if you know that's what you want to do. If, um, besides from the medicine degree, if there's another program you're not entirely sure what you want to do, you can certainly do a double degree, so a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Commerce, for example, which is four years in duration. Um, we certainly do have on-campus accommodation options for students. Um, it isn't compulsory or guaranteed, but as long as you apply early, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, you generally have your own bedroom and you may have your own bathroom, depending on which option you do choose. We do have meal plans available, but they are associated with the um, accommodation provider as opposed to what you'll find at a US school, which is sort of central to the university. Um, so cost of um, well, tuition generally is about $24,000 per year um, and the cost of attendance, including your flights, accommodation, insurance and all that fun stuff is about $40,000 per year. When you consider it's generally three years in duration, it can be a lot more affordable option for students. You're also able to use your US financial aid or GI Bill um, when studying with us and we do have merit-based scholarships available to US students and you can work while studying a minimum wage is now actually $20 an hour, which is super helpful. How to apply, it is free to apply to the university and we offer rolling admissions. So you can apply at any time in your senior year. Um, you just need to apply through the university website. Um, at the moment we are test optional. So if you haven't had a chance to take an SAT or ACT test, that's totally okay. Um, you can apply with your G GPA and high school transcripts. Um, generally, once we have all your information, it takes about two weeks to, um, for us to give you an offer to the university. Depending on what GPA or test scores we require is dictated based on what you would like to study. But generally speaking, we require about a 24 ACT or 1200 SAT is the minimum requirements and about a 3.0 out of four. But it can be flexible depending on what you do want to study. So once you complete your application, um, you will receive an offer letter, hopefully, and then you can apply for your financial aid and accommodation and scholarships. You accept the offer letter, um, pay the deposit, get your overseas healthcare insurance, and don't worry, I will assist you throughout this entire process. Um, and then apply for your visa and flights and come to Australia. Being in the Southern Hemisphere, our dates are a little bit different. We commence in the February and July of each year. Um, it's kind of like a delayed summer vacation. So you um, essentially start in July and then you have December, January, February off. Um, that's it from me. I am based in Los Angeles, so more than happy to answer any questions you do have. I'll pop my email um, into the chat as well in case you haven't had a second to get that QR code. But thanks so much for listening. Thank you. And at this point, I'd like to invite uh, all of our wonderful presenters to turn on their their video cameras. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a round robin, as we like to call it here at Strikescan. I have a couple questions for our um, our panelists this evening. And starting with the first one, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with University of Warwick. Oh, thanks so much, Sarah. So I guess, I guess my advice would be if there is a specific subject that you're really interested in, 
um, do have a look at what the different universities specialise in for that subject, because you'll find, you know, there's over 100 universities in the UK and maybe all of us will offer international relations or business management, but how and uh, what we teach within that programme will vary at the different institutions. So, so mine would be, um, don't just think about the institution. Um, if there is a subject of interest, look at the course content, the programme content as well. And Goldsmith, University of London. Since we're all international schools, I'll be focused. Um, so perhaps like for the UCAS application, I might recommend to um, American students to really make sure they understand what we're looking for in the personal statement. Uh, it is very different from like normal college essays or what you might consider like a common app essay. Um, so yeah, just kind of make sure you're paying attention to the UCAS website and going through your um, the worksheets and and prompts that they offer you there. There's a ton of research to be found on the UCAS website for, as Sarah mentioned just now, courses that we offer across the universities and, and everything like that. So it's also a great resource for you. University of Essex. Hi, thanks, Sarah. Um, I think my piece of advice would be to really take advantage of all the virtual resources that are out there. So I guess one of like the silver linings over what's happened over the last 18 months, couple of years, is that universities have really stepped up with what they're offering in terms of virtual open days, talks and taster sessions. So um, if you can't get over and visit a university in person, then really just take advantage of what's on offer virtually because there's lots of great resources out there. And Newcastle University. Um, I would say just to be aware that for uh, applications, particularly to the UK, that um, you really do need to know the major that you want to study. If you're a student um, or a parent who, who has a child who is undecided um, and maybe wants to come in on one major but might maybe switch to another major, that's not really something you can do within our system. And um, so you really should know before your submitting your application that what you want to study is definitely what you want to do through right throughout your degree um, and, on, and on to graduation. University of Bradford. I would say uh, to somebody that's going through the college search process is to reach out to schools that you're interested in, or even if you're, you know, slightly um, think you might have an interest in them. You know, we they've invested a lot of money into uh, people like us to um, talk to students like you. Uh, so even if it's any of us here today or any school um, that you're looking at, uh, we have plenty of ways to get in contact and, and talk to you. And no question is too small for any of us. So uh, please. Uh, be, be friendly to us, we're, we're here to talk. And Macquarie University. Um, you're obviously here listening to an international presentation, so you're already thinking about going overseas, but I would recommend looking far and wide. The three or four years that you do your bachelor degree, it's probably gonna be when you have the most freedom in your life. So don't be too scared about it. And know that if you don't like it, you can always come back to the States, but give it a go. Um, and even if you can't go for the full degree program, make sure you do a study abroad or exchange opportunity because no one ever regrets going overseas for education. And uh, our next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? And quickly, we'll go uh, through our list again with University of Warwick. Yeah, I would just say really just to remember that really the type of student that comes to Warwick, um, typically the type of student that, that would come and study with us is one who is really, really passionate about their academic subject, um, but also isn't just necessarily head down in books all the time. They do want to kind of explore as a person, they're dynamic and they want to really make things happen. And that's the type of student that would really enjoy their time at Warwick. Goldsmith. Yeah, um, I'd actually say something similar. Uh, Goldsmiths is, is consistently voted by students in the UK as one of the most politically active and creative schools in the country. Um, we count Oscar, Tony, BAFTA, uh, Mercury Prize, Turner Prize winners among our, um, our, our alumni. So it's really great for the creative industries. University of Essex. Um, probably how international and inclusive the university is, but probably what students would say is the most memorable thing is that we have our own campus cat that lives on campus. It has its own social media as well, um, has its own Instagram and Facebook account. So I think that's quite <laughs> memorable from a student's point of view. Newcastle University. Um, 
I would definitely say the friendliness of the institution and the city. Um, and I know everyone will probably say the same thing about theirs, but um, we were ranked recently third for diversity and, and inclusion, um, and we were named outstanding for our student support. So I do think that it's not just kind of marketing blurb, like it is true. We are a very friendly institution, even though we have 27,000 students and the city itself in the UK is known as being really, really friendly and welcoming as well. University of Bradford. Say, so, uh, no matter who you are, what you want to study, uh, there's a place for you at Bradford, um, especially if you um, want to study at a place that is maybe not uh, one of the biggest cities. Uh, we have uh, great options for students who want to um, be in, in maybe a more traditional campus environment. And Macquarie University. I'd say that we've got the best of everything, the big cosmopolitan city experience with the wonderful beaches and outdoor activities and national parks really close to campus, and then the big parkland university that's incredibly vibrant and welcoming for students. Now I want to go. It sounds amazing. And thank you so much to our wonderful panelists for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up uh, for more sessions today. And you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. -C -C. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.